series these days is to surprise the audience or, or give them something that feels like a, a natural entity but is not overly familiar. Well, you guys were involved in the designing of it. We didn't, I was involved in the design, just sort of the execution of it. And, and try, I talked to you at times, David, sort of a Greta Garbo lighting. <laughs> in the close-up, so the way the creature moves forward, it moves into this lighting that's got this sort of thing on it, and just a little bit of like mystery to it, and, and a lure of some sort. Also, you have the eyes to show up, because like you said, it's the mother's eyes. We're in there, we wonder that all that, you know, reflects something more than just monster bottom light, scary sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, it, it, one of the, the burdens of you know not seeing a creature for a while and finally seeing it is uh, you know how do you see it, especially now when we've seen everything um, and and feel like it's got any sort of value. And so I was, you know, to me the, the Neville Page who designed the, the creature did an amazing job. Um, you know, part of it was the, once you have a design, that's great, but how you how you bring it to life is, is critical. Uh, Bruce Greenwood, who is a, an amazing actor, who he played Pike in the Star Trek movie we did, and uh, he came on to do the performance for the creature. In fact, uh, his whole performance, if you watch the DVD, there's a, a feature that shows it. You can see that literally the performance of the creature is Bruce, um, his facial uh, performance. And the, the lighting, the rendering, the animation of it, the, the, all of that, it, it was also critically important. But like you say, it's it is so difficult. Even you know any one of the recent Star Wars movies has just every possible variation of every alien ever. Like it's just it's impossible to do the thing where you think, oh, you know, which is why one of the reasons I so loved the alien uh, in Attack of the Block, which was if you've seen it, which is just such a brilliant like big sort of silhouette with teeth, you know, and you just kind of it, it, it was one of those great kind of uh, movie tricks of being able to sort of see something and yet not see it. You know, it, it let your imagination kind of figure out how that worked. But anyway, I, I, I was, a, you know, I was really grateful to the work that Dennis and Island did visually. And real quick, the, the sound, it doesn't come to life unless you are hearing it as well. And we we worked quite a while to figure out what that voice was. And I thought, you know, Ben, you could talk about that, but you did an amazing work with that. Well, Ben, talk a little bit about that and also about, I mean, I, I just, has there ever been a movie that had more metal sounds than the movie? Yeah, right. Yeah, it, uh, yeah, more metal crashing than any film I've ever worked on. And that was the, the first thing I started with. I just jumped into the dumpster behind Lucas and someone started throwing a microwave around inside <laughs> and recording all the different sounds. And uh, that was really one. No, no, they're used to that sort of thing. <laughs> But aside from uh, the, you know moments of you know uh, sonic chaos like the, the, the river crash and the bus being beaten up, I mean those have to be carefully orchestrated. It isn't just a matter of uh, you know cutting in the next sound on the roll, so to speak, and orchestrating. And lots of trial and error went into making it. So there's a kind of a beginning of middle and an evolution of those things, so that they are interesting to the ear always. There's something happening and something new unfolding, and not just uh, being redundant. Um, the alien creature, of course, it was a real challenge because most of the time you heard something associated with it before you ever really had a clue as to what it looked like or how big it was or whether it was multiple things you didn't know. And very hard to establish that sort of thing because, once again, you're trying to establish something completely alien, but it has to read as something you understand as a, 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 you know, a, a, a threat, an organic threat of some kind, some kind of sentient creature. Um, so that, that was uh, so it was footsteps and it was breathing. Uh, most of the sounds of the creature were derived from a squeaky drum chair, my my the stool, my drum set. When you, you sit there and you turn, it goes like that, and a lot of that processed and then worked on some circuits that could um, alter the human voice, in which I can play the animal sound on one side of it, pick up. I make sort of steady growling uh, loops out of uh, burping or growling of animals. And, and you can talk and they can modulate that sound. And JJ would come in and we'd play, because it was all happening toward the end of the movie, I guess the alien was coming together really at the last stages. Uh, and we were able to get enough articulation to it without making it seem you know, absolutely human, <coughs> not just an animal, and get some intelligence into it. But yeah, sure. This is uh, uh, burn. Uh, one of the things that, uh, the honest, <laughs> but to be able to work with, the, you know, someone who whose work I admire for so long and actually collaborate uh, was really a, a, a 
crazy dream again, uh, obviously with Stephen and, and Dennis, and with Ben, it was just, uh, it was truly unbelievable. But the, one of the cool things that we discovered is when, when we had the longer sounds from the creature, it, 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 in a weird way, the, the shorter they were, the more intelligent the creature sounded. It almost sounded like it was trying to communicate something. And the longer they were, the more it was sort of like the growling, primitive creature. It more or less exactly. So that was an interesting thing that we sort of were discovering that when Ben was playing these things with these really cool, you know, audio tools, that the shorter ones started to feel like, oh, now I feel like it's actually thinking something and there's premeditated action, you know. Well, you know, we want to take some questions from the audience. Um